Hey everyone, welcome to another thousand dollar strap search. I've got my thousand dollars in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, a lot of you guys are watching my That's Not an Error series and I am very thankful for that. I am very grateful for that. Thank you so much. Hopefully you guys are learning a lot through that. What I get a lot is anyone is allowed to sell anything they want at any price because there is no quote-unquote value on there. They say that a note is worth what someone is willing to pay. Okay, let's take that route. If a note is worth what someone is willing to pay, and you are using, using an auction site like eBay to sell your note, then by all means, put the note up for auction. If the note has a face value of $20 and you believe it's worth more than $20 as a seller, then put it up for auction at $20 and let the people bid. Let your buyers put the price on it. Do you see the catch with that? If you have a note that you think is worth $1,000, and you put it up there at 20 and it sells for 30 well, you're going to feel like you just lost $970. Where, in fact, what actually happened is that someone paid what they thought the note was worth. Especially if there are multiple bids. If there are multiple bids, as a seller, that's the best possible thing that can happen. Because if a note has one bid, then you may have priced it too little. But if the note has two bids, that shows two people showing interest in the note. And when you have two people showing interest in the note, whichever one of those two people has a higher value for the note in their mind will pay more for that particular note. So, like I said, if a person thinks they have a note that's worth all kinds of money because it's rare, okay, put it up there for face value and let the actual people buying the notes decide the value. You're not going to see that with a lot of the scammers I show because they're the ones buying the notes at face value to begin with, and then they're trying to rip other people off. So yeah, uh, that's just one of the things that really, really gets me. Um, let, let demand dictate the price. Uh, it's very easy to say, this note is worth $1,000, and I'm going to put it on eBay for $1,000, and if somebody offers me $900, i will take it. Very easy to do. That doesn't mean this note is worth $1,000. If I put this on eBay and started at a dollar, and the bidding goes up to $1,000, well, yeah, then maybe it is. But if I think it's worth $1,000, and the bidding doesn't get any bids, well, then it's probably not worth that much. All right. Let's get these out of the way, and let's take a look at what I found this week. Wow, somebody drew the anarchy symbol across George's face. And it says something on the back. What's it say? If you're scared of socialism, you're scared of the people. Well, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> that's a real interesting thought. Um, yeah, so I saw that, and uh, that was that was interesting. So I figured I'd pull that one and show you guys. Uh, here's another one, kind of like the opposite. <laughs> here's some wannabe gangster who drew a bunch of guns all over George and uh, sewed his lips shut. Yeah, nice little piece of artwork there. And uh, I don't know, does this say anything on the back? No, nothing on the back of this one. Anyway, two art notes that I found. Uh, that worth anything? No, these are not worth anything. If you draw on a bill, it does not make it worth more, unless you're famous. No, even if you're not, whatever. I'm not even going to go there. All right, I uh, found some birthday notes. Uh, this would be the sixth, uh, June 19th, 1990. Um, what else do I got here? Here's a trinary. Ones, fours, and fives. Uh, ones, sixes, and sevens. Zeros, ones, and fives. Ones, twos, and fives. And this one is quads. Quad fives right there. Quad sevens, and this is neat too. I mean, you got quad sevens, one, one, two, two. So the, all the all the numbers are together. Uh, so it's a trinary, and it's quads. Technically four pairs if you really wanted to go that way. Pair of sevens, another pair of sevens, pair of ones, pair of twos. Still not worth any more than face value. Uh, quad sevens again, and what do we 
got here quad eights, quad nines. Here's a note where the nine is a little bit thicker. So what? Doesn't increase the value. Quad nines again. And some stars. 2017A star. Always checking to see if they're filled. Another 2017A. If you look close, this one has... Uh, it looks like it's got some of the wet ink transfer on it. So what? <laughs> it's not worth anything. That's just uh, wet ink transfer. No additional value. 2017 star again. Another 2017 star. None of the stars are filled. 2013 star. Another 2013 star note. Another 2013 star. And another, starting with a couple zeros. Oh, maybe. And then look at this. 1985 star note. In pretty rough shape, but yeah, you don't find you don't find too many of those in circulation. Uh, some older notes, 2013 or 20 or 2003 A. Yeah, I can talk. 2003, and we get to a 1999. Another 99, 1995. Not a web note. Another 95. Another 95. Another 95. And 1995 is the oldest note I found this week. All right, so that's what I found. What did I pull out? Well, I pulled out another eBay purchase, and uh, this is pretty cool. And it's cool for all the reasons you're not going to think when I show it. Let me see. Let me see what I got here. This is a $20 note, and if we look real close, it's a series of 1934A. This is an emergency currency note from Hawaii. You can see the Hawaii overprint here, here. You can see the brown seal versus the uh, green seals that you'd see on Federal Reserve notes. This one says Federal Reserve note, so it is a Federal Reserve, but it's also emergency currency. This was used in Hawaii during World War II. The idea was if they replaced all the cash with these notes here, stamped Hawaii front and back, you can see there, um, that if Japan invaded the island of Hawaii and confiscated all the money in the banks, Congress could simply say any note with Hawaii no longer has cash value. Therefore, we are no, we are not funding the Japanese government. So it reduced part of the reason for invading Hawaii in the first place. So that's the history behind the note. It is the $20 note. It is the largest denomination that they made. Uh, it's not in the greatest of shape, but it's all right. Um, Somewhere 8, 10, 12, somewhere around there for a grade. Now, a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, it's cut bad. That's a cutting error. And, well, if I look real close, there's still a border there. And let's take a look at the back. Yep. There's still a border there as well. Why do I check the front and the back? That may be one of the questions that you may be thinking. Well, sometimes the back of the note will be printed just fine. And then they, when they put the page in to print the front it wouldn't be aligned right. And when that happens, then you end up with notes where the centering on the front may be off, but the centering on the back is perfect. That would be a printing error, okay? Because now the front and the back don't align. On this note, uh, this is the wide side. So if we hold on to that, you can see this is also the wide side. Uh, so the printing actually aligns. The problem with this note is a cutting error. And... <laughs> Is it an error? Well, yeah, technically it's an error because it's, a, it's wrong. But is it a major error? Well, you can still see there's white there. If it gets into the print, that's when it starts to become a major error. But this one, as close as that is, did not get into the print. So this must be worth a ton of money, right? Because of the cutting? <laughs> not exactly. Um, there's one other thing about this note that I want to show you. Okay, and that has to do with the back of the note. You can see the back plate right here. All right, let's talk about the notes in and of themselves one more time. This one here is a 1934A, which means they also did a 1934 run. Okay, the 1934 run would have used lower numbers. They would have used the plate numbers, obviously starting with one, because that's where they started. Um, and as the notes wear out, or as the plates wear out, then they would replace the plates. So the more plates that wear out, the higher the number you get. Well, those are the plates designated for 1934. 
There were then plates designated for 1934A. All right. And those started at a very specific number. They decided that they were going to still use the 1934 back plates until they wore out, and then they'd bring in the 1934A back plates. Which means that on some notes, this is clearly a 1934A front, but what about the back? Is the back from 1934 or 1934A? The way you determine that is by checking to see if it is a mule. So I've got the big book, Paper Money of the United States, and let's take a peek. Here is the book, and if we look here, you can see some of these have this little red M, and that indicates mule. What is a mule? A mule is when you have two things that aren't supposed to go together that they put together, like a horse and a donkey. If you put together a horse and a donkey, what do you get? you get a mule. So a mule with money is when you have a 1934 front plate or back plate with a 1934A front plate. And if we look real close right here, 2305 mule, 1934A, yes. And it says a reverse number 317 and below. Okay, so that that's what it that's what it says there. So now let's check the note. And if we look we are looking for 317 and below, and that one says 204. This is a mule. Now, like I said, it's not in the greatest of shape, and it does have this apparent cutting error. Now, I bought this at an auction. Let's look at the price. Here is the price, and like I said, here's VG8 and 12 and 20. So the note is going to be in this range somewhere, okay? Now, here we've got uh, 2305, which is a 1934A, and the regular 1934A in, in a VG8 starts at 60, at 12 it's 95, and at 20 it's 125, okay? The mule, one line behind that, starts at 100, in 12 it's 150, and in 20 it's 200. So... I think this note is a little better than an 8. It's probably a 10 or a 12. So if it wasn't a mule, it would be between $60 and $95. And as a mule, it's between $100 and $150, in my opinion, on, on the particular note. Okay? 60 to 95 100 to 150 Those are your two choices. And the reason I gave both of those choices is because if you didn't realize this was a mule, you'd be going on the $60 to $95 range on this note. If you did realize it was a mule, that puts it at $100 to $150. Oh, yeah, and it's got a cutting error. So how much do we multiply that by? <laughs> to me, nothing. But some of you out there are going to be convinced that this note should be worth more because of that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But like I said, the person who sold this sold it at auction. And there were many bids on this. So what did I end up getting this note for? I paid $70 for this note. $70, well, $71. $70.99 was my high bid on this particular note. I actually bid more than that, but I got it for $70.99. So as a non-mule, this is worth $60 to $95. It's a mule, and I just showed you the book, a mule is $100 to $150. Obvious cutting error or obvious miscut. Shouldn't necessarily say error. Um, and even with that, the note sold for $70. That's what happens when you actually let the people who collect notes pay what they think the note is worth. Rather than a person taking this note and saying, oh, it's a cutting error. It's worth 10 times the original, so it's worth $1,000. Well, apparently not. When you let the actual buyers put a value on it, it's amazing what happens. So that's just, like I said, more insight as to why I really enjoy tearing into these eBay scammers, because that's all they are. They're, they're scammers. If they were trying to sell stuff for what it was worth, they'd auction it off, and they would get the price that it's worth, and not a penny more, because that's how an auction works.
Anyway, like I said, I paid 70 for this one. Do I think it's worth a little more than that? Probably. I think this one, in this particular con condition, may be worth between 75 and and $100. But I didn't buy this to sell. I bought it because it's a mule, and I didn't have it. And I think it's cool to come up with notes in my collection that I just didn't have in the in the first place. All right, guys, if you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.